I'd like to thank you all uh, for coming to, to today's How to Talk for Postdocs. Um, today we have Dr. Hanglin, who is from uh, Rocky Tuan's lab where he um, studies tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. And today he's going to be talking about um, how to use 3D printing to fabricate live cell scaffolds for tissue engineering. So. Hi. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to share my work in this area and uh, I'm trying to include more detail as more as I can. But if uh, we get here to you, so please stop me and let me know. Okay, so let's start from the background. So why we need a 3D printing? So why we need a teacher engineering? So here is a current the clinical challenges. So every day, so we face the functional loss or deficiency of tissue organs. For example, the car accident, the disease, so that destroy the tissue organs. So for humans, we have very really limited uh, self-healing ability. So we can reduce some of the liver, so some of the, the bone, but we have very, really, very really limited region in the cartilage in all organs. So currently the golden standard is used in the uh, uh, chest plants. The chest comes from the uh, own body, or the luggage the plant, also from the other people, the other grafts. So this is what works really well, but the problem is we have a long waiting list. So that means you submit a request for the chest plant, you probably have waited one year to finally get the, the organ, the donation of the organs. So many people die during the waiting, waiting um, time. About three decades ago, um, the scientists figured out a new way to try to build the uh, organ or tissues in visual, as outside the body. So this idea, so as a cell from the human, so either from your own body or somewhere else, we isolate it and uh, expand it into the culture. And then we put the cell, once we have enough cell number, we put it into the 3D scaffold. So what is 3D scaffold? So basically the thing about it is a, um, a temporary support to allow the cell attach to um, growth and uh, become the tissue you want. So basically it's like a support. So you can directly put the uh, cell seeding scaffold back to the body, or you can culture in vitro to make it more mature. So that's the whole idea of tissue engineering. If you simplify the process, it can put three parts. So cells, signalings, and scaffolds. Uh, cells is the base. No cells, no biology. So signalings is, is a, um, the thing you use to direct that the cell behave uh, as, what, as, as what you want. For example, if you want to make the uh, liver, so you have to make the cell behave like the liver cells. So let the signaling to direct the cell behave. So the scaffold is used to support the cells. So today I'm going to focus on this area. So that's why we need three printing for the scaffold. So what's the idea of scaffold for the teaching engineering? So obviously it should be back compatible, which means it should be safe to the cells and the body. So secondly, it should be biodegradable. So I will specifically focus on the fabrication of the scaffold. So it should be rapid and scalable fabrication, and uh, it should be have a limit as short time to allow the fast publication, um, oh, especially it should minimize expertise. So that means if you want the scarf to be popular used in hospital or for by patient, it should be really easy to make. You cannot make a three professor or like a ten student to make one tissue organs. It should be easy to use by the surgeon or by the trained technicians. So fourth is the fabrication of custom architectures. So it's easy to understand because people feel different. Some is tall, some is short. So how we make the scaffold that can be exactly fit to the one you want to uh, work, um, apply on. So last one is the lifestyle incarceration. So what that means? So currently when we make the scaffold, and uh, these are two steps. So first we make the scaffold at the beginning, and then we put the cell on the top of the scaffold. These are two steps. So the, the, um, the outcome of two step is the cell can only close on the top of the scaffold. They cannot get it inside to the scaffold. Um, then the remodeling of the scaffold will be kind of slow and incomplete. So it's ideally, when you fabricate the scaffold, you should include a cell in it. So this ideal scaffold for it. So there are kind of some methods for the uh, scaffold fabrication. So I want, to, I want to focus on other part. 
we strictly go to the um, solid free form verification method, also called 3D printing. So what is 3D printing? Um, so basically, this is a long description of the technology. Basically, it's a computer-controlled um, fabrication. Use a computer to design the model you want. Use a computer to control the process. So by this way, you can um, minimize the expertise, minimize the, the, the difference between the different um, people and the particular method. So basically, it's a computer-controlled process. Before you go on, I was just wondering with the, if you could go back to another one more slide. Yeah, is it just the, the reason for the SFF is is to, to minimize the expertise needed compared to the others? Like, why would you pick it over the other methods? Yeah, so good question. So here, like the, the molding and the cutting, so this it's kind of really it's easy, but it's hard to ad uh, adapt to like a um, patient variable or, 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 or Asian. So, for example, you cannot really you can, uh, cut really well to fit the anatomy of the human. So, you need some really detail or high technology to exactly fit the, 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 the architecture, the set you want. Mm -hmm. And the, like other method, um, you, you can also use the other uh, method here, but the 3D printing so can. Um, Greatly reduce the effect of human difference. So that's what we have a computer control process. Mm -hmm. But the desolderizing can be very powerful. Yeah, the desolderizing is, is, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So let me, um, let me answer your question. So this, we all, in our lab, we also work a lot on the desolderous uh, metrics. The problem for the desolderous metric is it's very soft. So that's a problem. So if you get the, 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 the heart or liver, so once you desterilization the, the process, they, they, they do not change the shape, but the inside, the touch just has destroyed it. So that can be a problem. So a, a second problem is how you are going to re, reconstitute the, 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 the scalp you made. So there's another problem. So nothing is perfect, but so that we can uh, work on both ways. Um, yeah, good question. Yeah. So I think you'll... Um, hear a lot about 3D printing in TV or even in the radio. So you can print the jewelry, you can print the car, you can print food, and also you can print tools in your house. So today I'm going to specially focus on the print of the organ or tissues. So that is we use the 3D printer to produce the life cell, including the uh, human tissue organs. So to use the 3D printing, um, we can solve some of our problems. So we can, if we use the biocompatible materials, and the 3D printing can reduce the, uh, can adapt the method to, um, to minimize the, the time and resources. So if we get trained by the, um, in the 3D designing or the machine usage, so you can be very good at it to produce the scaffold. So we can solve some of our problem. But the last one is the life safety facilitation. So most of the printing technology currently used, they won't allow it to use the life cell in it, because they even use a really hot, like a laser, or they use like powder, so which is not compatible to the life cells. So there's some, uh, some dif uh, different printer we currently use in a market. So one is a stereolithography, this is the machine I'm, I'm going to talk today. So we have a 3D printer, so basically this is the same to the printer used every day. So they, they don't use the ink and the paper, they just use the cell and the polymer. So also have other machines. Since we are going to do the life cell fabrication, so we have to choose the, the, the um, method have potential to compatible with the cells. So there are three methods can be used: the stereolithography, uh, by plotting, and three printing. So I will choose the first one. The reason is because the technology allows the very precisely control of the uh, printing. They have high resolution. They have very really fast printing rate. So I start working on this um, project. Um, so I'm going to talk about this principle of the method because it's very important to uh, guide how you use the technology. So the technology is based on the uh, photo cross linking. So photo cross linking means um, you use the photo or light to do the phase transition. So for example, um, you can use the photo to, from the powder to solid or from liquid to solid. There's two things that are important. 
The first one called the initiator. They can produce the free radicals when it's brought to light. So they can break to the um, free radical. And then the free radical will cross link the monomer to the polymer. So they start the free kind of transition from liquid to small molecular to the giant molecules, from a liquid to a solid. So these cartoons will show what's the process of photo cross linking. So we have three parts here, the so monomer, one or two. They could be the same, they could be different. And uh, once you would like to hit the initiator, they will produce two free radicals here. Um, and the name the free radical will attack to the monomer. So they break it down the double bond here. So then we make the monomer become the free radical. So once the two um, free radicals match each other, they form a new bond here. So then we connect modem one to modem two covalently. Mm -hmm. So you can you can imagine you have thousands of molecules back together, so it become the giant molecules. Then you become from the liquid to the solid. Let's call it free transition. So the second key feature here is they use the layer layer by layer by layer staking to form a scaffold. So that is you paint one layer and stay to the top, then you form a 3D scaffold. So here is the the, um, the process. So we input the image here. So like just some 2D images, like photos. Um, you stack the photo together and input to the to the projector. So the projector will project the image to the uh, monomer solution based on the sequence you um, input. So they project the image one by one to the polymer solution. Um, because the polymer is able to uh, cross link it by the photo. So they will form the, the structure exactly the same to the image you project. And then you move up to another layer, so you project again. So the second layer will bind to the first layer. So you can think about layer by layer, you can form a uh, 3D scaffold. Okay, so here's the machine I'm working on. So you start from a 3D model, so you can from like, a, when you make a heart, you, you start from a heart. You need some beaver, you start from beaver. You need a 3D design. And then you slice the 3D model to elaborate to the images. So then you, you, you put the, import the image to the projector, and the projector will project the image to the uh, monomer solution, and then they will, they will end up with some scaffold. Ideally, the scaffold should be exactly the same to your design. So that's ideally. Mm -hmm. So uh, about five years ago, um, I started uh, adopting technology. At that time, there's no report to use a life cell for the, um, using technology to do life cell fabrication. That means um, when people use the technology, they did not put a cell in it. So I'm thinking since this technology is really powerful, so why I cannot uh, change the parameter condition to allow life cell fabrication? So this idea, um, we have a design, obviously from the computer, and uh, we will put the cell in the monomer solution here, mix it with the monomer solution, and uh, we put it in the machine. So our goal here is we form a scaffold with a design architecture, and meanwhile, you have a live cell included into the, um, into the scaffold of fabrication. That's an idea um, aims we are going to make. So this is a machine I'm working on now. So um, the machine is made by Imagine Tech. It's a really big company. They produce a lot of 3D printer. And the headquarters is in Germany. Um, so there are two parts here. The top is the build platform. They can build the, uh, here is the place the scaffold will attach to. And the bottom is the basement, which is to use to hold, um, hold the modern solution. So the bottom here is the control panel. So you have computer in it, you have project in it, and the bulb and the motor. The bulb is used to produce a light because it's photo cross linking, right? So if you look at carefully here, there's a projector, a big lens here. They used to project a light to the a monomer solution. So this is the machine I'm using now. Uh, I, I bought it about five years ago, so already out of date, a little out of date. You can get a new, new model um, now. How expensive are they? Uh, what I bought it is about $60,000. $60, so 
It's not that bad. It's even a power system machine. So. so are they more expensive now or less expensive? It should be pretty the same. Yeah. Pretty same. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a size machine. You can get it too. So if you have a small print format, it's not as expensive as you get one of the big ones. Yeah, that's true. So for the human use, we don't need like a huge like, printer, right? But if you want to for some like the tools, you probably need bigger, it's more expensive, that's true, yeah. Okay, so um when I started started the, the project, so I I'm, I'm gonna think about how we can change the parameter condition to allow the technology to use for the life safe application. So these things you can we I'm I'm uh, figured out. So this also maybe um, can be useful if you want to do the 3D printing in future by yourself. Mm -hmm. So first, we need a 3D template. It could be from the 3D design software or come from medical images. And for the cells, um, what is it going to use? Uh, it's obvious that okay, it's based on the tissue you're going to print. Right? If you need a hard cell, if you need a hard, you need a hard cells. And also, we need the aqueous solvent. So that is water-based solvent. Because cell cannot survive in organic solvent, so you have to be in the water. And the monomer, what the monomer you going to use? Um, it's also based on application. If you want to do the bone um, scaffold, it'd be very strong. Even though the brain is pretty soft. And actually draw attention to is the monomer had to be modified by the methylation to give the double bond to the monomer. Otherwise, they cannot be put across link. Then with your light, you can use a visible light, you can use a UV light. Obviously, if you for the cells, you cannot use a UV light. Maybe they want to kill the cell right away, but they have the potential to, to mutate the, the DNA to make a cancer in, in the in future. So, visible light is the, is the best one. What about the photo initiator? Uh, if you still remember, that's the one to initiate the photo cross-linking process. So it should not uh, have positive two cells, and then it should be visible light sensitive. So that's why it's dye. So uh, I'm going to talk more detail later. So why we need a dye in it. Okay, so let's start from the three templates. Um, what template we can use? So obviously we can from the 3D design software, such as the 3D Max. 3D Max is a really, really um, powerful or too professional like a, a 3D design software. I actually, for our purpose, it's over quality. Um, so I use the solid, solid works and the magic. So solid works is a really simple one. It's straightforward, and then uh, you can get it at one sixty dollars for the educational version. It's really cheap, and then probably you can really good at it after two or three weeks training. So it's a really good one. I always use the magic because it comes with the machine, and it also help a lot. So the second one is called clinical imaging. So um, so why would you create imaging? Because, as, as, as I discussed before, so even human, they have different anatomy, and uh, for the repair, we have to be fit the, the patient specific. And uh, how, we, how we make a scaffold is exactly the same to the, to the one we want. So the, the ideally, the best way is to do the clinical imaging. For example, we make a heart, the same to the, to, the, to the one you want. You just scan the heart and use the micro CD or other method. So use this template as I use this file as a template to, to derive the printing. So then the final product should be exactly the same to the one you want. So does most current CT and MRI software have the capability of exporting an SDL file? Yeah, that, that I, I'm going to put it now. So it sounds really easy, right? So you, you, like in micro CT, you also do a layer by layer scanning. Right. So they have a 2D image first. Then they recast it to the 3D model by some other software. Unfortunately, the, the, the 2D image they got, they have different format to the, to the, um, to the file we can use for printing. Huh? So we have to use another software to do a conversion, to convert the micro CD file to the 3D print files. Well, first, to, 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 to think about it, I think it's really easy, because like, you have 2D images, right? But no, it's very, very hard. You have a totally different format. So so this is the micro CD, you've got the files, you need a, another software called uh, ScanIP or Mimicus to convert the, the image, the micro image to the 3D models. So this was expensive. expensive. So I got a ScanIP, it cost us uh, about $16,000. Uh, 
So based on the, on the price, you can you can think about the price is very hard. Um, and the mimic is even even it's more expensive. I would never try it. So more expensive. Okay, so um, let's start from a really simple model. So this is designed by the soft, designed by the, um, the, the solid works. It's really easy. So the first one is a cube, but we have a lot of empty cube in it. So here's empty side here. The, the bottom one is more complicated. And they have the beam structure, and the, between the different beams, they have a cube empty space here. So the reason we, we want the, the polar scaffold is because it allows the neutron and the waste to change. And and um, they will talk about the, the, the conversion from the medical image to the 3D printing software. So the DICOM is a mostly used um, micro CD image, where STLFL is the one 3D printing can recognize. So we have to do conversion using the scan IP. So this is the process. I, I'm trying to copy more details, but um, I don't have too much time today. And uh, you start from some micro CD image here, so this is a typical micro CD image, and then you convert it to the, um, to the um, 3D model. So during this step, it probably take you one week or probably take, take a couple of days to adjust a different parameter, um, because they, they're, they're too different. Um, so here, uh, we're going to talk, talk about some trick, trick here. Um, so let's use the bone as, a, as an example. So bone is a porous tissue, right? You get a lot of pore in the bone. So when you do the micro CD scanning, you get all the details, like inside, from different pore size, the different thin structure. So if you directly convert all the uh, micro CD file of the bone to the 3D models, the file is huge, and it takes about one gigabyte. You got too much details. And some of the details cannot be printed by the, by the uh, particular too tiny or too soft. So the, print, the printer maybe use a lot of support to finally print something you want. So you make, make the, um, not a very feasible. So the way we are going to do now is we just get the outside structure of the bone. So we only get the shape. And then we create the pore by, by ourselves. So the right side here is the, um, the structure of some other knee. And then we created the bone by ourselves using you know, the, use the um, magic magic or the sort of works. So by this way, you did not really adapt the structure of the, the bone, but you get the anatomy structure. And then the pore you made allow to the nutrients change or the bone regeneration. So by this way, you can greatly reduce the file size and then make your print is much uh, smooth and easier. And, um, so that's one way um, you can think about it when you do conversion. And then, I also need to talk about the support. So what the what support means? So if you want to put this, some scuffle like this, so you think, uh, think about the lead part, it cannot be printed out without support. So you have printed something first here, and they can help the print of the bottom here. Huh? So the yellow and the red here is called support. They, it's not part of your, 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 your model, but it had to be printed together to allow the scalp print. So after printing, you have to manually to remove it. So you can think about it's very painful, so when you do a printing. So the, the, the rule is you build as less support as you can because you have to remove it. And the second, avoid the internal support because it cannot reach the inside by the freezer or something like that. And also reinforce the edge because the edge is the most, it's a place having the most of force and the bearing force there. And then you can adjust the orientation of models. Sometimes they can help you reduce the support. So there's some rule you, you can think about it. How do you remove the, the support? Just Yeah, so if you look carefully here, <coughs> you have some teeth here, right? Yeah. So they're very really easy to, to tear off. Okay. Yeah, so like, but then you got to smooth it down, I guess. Um, or you don't worry about it? Yeah, because they're only very smooth. When you take the teeth off, it's very smooth. Oh. Yeah. yeah, because they, they, they design um, for purpose, because it's a really tiny connection layer. Huh? So we won't have too much like a thing there. Okay, so this is the um, software we use to produce a support for the magic. So they can automatically produce a support for you. And uh, all you need to do is to adjust and delete some, add some, and uh, based on the requirement. Because sometimes the support is not perfect, you can adjust it. So usually, usually, um, 
the support of fail, a support of will come with the print, you don't have to buy it. Mm. Then I talk about the slicing software. So you still remember we we pick out we, we start from the 3D model, we just slide it to a lot of the images. So usually the software also comes with the machine. And all you need to do is to import it to the um, software called the factory, and then they will slide for you to a lot of to the image here. Huh? Okay, then we'll talk about the polymer. So what kind of polymer you can use? Again, it totally depends on application. Um, so this is some example you can use for now. So you can put a pack, which is a bi compatible but not degradable. You can put some you know, gelatin. Sorry for it's very long, but probably the gelatin. And the product also has hyaluronic acid. So like the gelatin and hyaluronic acid, they are um, native um, polymer. So let's that uh, exist in, in human. So it's perfect for the cell growth. But they are kind of soft because gelatin and hyaluronic they are soft. So you probably you need other materials to, to make it stronger. So this is something you need to think about. It. And then mechanical property, so it will make it strong soft. So obviously it should be back compatible. Um, so do you want it to be degradable? But sometimes we don't even want to be degradable. And uh, then you have to think about the cell binding ligands. So that means this is the cell friendly. So because if you want the cell to do something to the scaffold, the cell have to attach and do something on the scaffold. So you have to allow the cell attachment. So that means the scaffold should supply some um, motif so the cell can combine it like RGD uh, peptide. And also, it should not swell or shrink. Um, because the, the whole point of 3D printing is to precisely control the geometry. If you swell or shrink, it's not good. You can change the, the morphology. Mm -hmm. And with uh, the hyaluronic acid, it's a perfect scaffold, a perfect material for the, for the cell uh, binding or uh, glowing. But the problem with hyaluronic acid is they sweat a lot. They usually sweat double the size to the original printing. Mm -hmm. So, originally, so. Hyaluronic acid cannot be the scaffold alone. It had to be bound to our scaffold. Mm. So that thing we need to think about during choosing the uh, polymer. And cells, uh, it totally depends on the application. And uh, uh, I want to get here, I was draw attention to the how to prevent the cell settling down. Mm. So the, the printing of the cell probably take one two hours. And the during the time, cell will stay with the modern solution. Mm. So, because we use the water as the base for the solution, right? Because cell is heavier than water, that eventually the cell will settle down to the bottom of the, the, the plate. So at, at, and as a result, so we do a printing, so you get, you, you probably, some part you have a lot of cells, but other part is zero cells. It's very really, really bad for the, print, for, the, for the quality of the print. So you, have, you need to find a way to allow the cell uh, floating or suspension in the model solution during printing. So there are two ways uh, I have tried. So one is you can change the density of the model solution. So you can make it um, close to the density of cells. Then the cell will flow in the solution. The second is we increase the viscosity of the solution. So think about that glue. It's very really sticky, so the cell cannot move freely. That's another way to prevent the cell settling down. The problem is another method, so need to have a test it. Mm. So the first one you can use is called a perco. So a perco is a really tiny molecule. They can um, change the density of the solution, but it's really safe to the cells. So they use a lot. Of, there's a lot in the um, isolating of the blood cells. So you can, um, by changing the percentage of perco in the solution, you can adjust the density of the solution. So by this is a different ratio here, and um, one to nine is in the um, in the light is. It's lighter and the C24 is heavier. So the cell will, will stay in a specific uh, density here. So the 3 to 7 is the perfect fit one to suspend the human edible device from cells. So you have to choose this purple density in the modern solution to uh, include in the printing process to prevent the cell, cell settling down. So the second one is you can use with sticky molecules. Uh, the one I use the most is called hyaluronic acid 700 kilodalton. It's really dry the molecules, really sticky, so you can include it in the monomer. So here is the movie, so I um, can show you the cell will stay in a different layer of the, um, of the scaffold. So I adjust the, the focus from the top to the bottom. 
so you can see the cell uh, distributed evenly in the different layers. Then we'll talk about the photo initiators. So because we're going to use a visible light, we should be visible light sensitive. It should be water soluble and a low toxicity and high emissions. So we, we have to deal with the concentration very carefully because it really changes your printing process. So it even affects the cell viability and also affects the structure of the scaffold. So um, if you have too much of initiators, they produce too much free radical. So they cross. A cross link not only the place you want, they also call it somewhere else. So you have to um, get the concentration best for the printing, but not that high. So these are all the initial I've been tried uh, about maybe 15. And unfortunately, there's only one works. So that is dissolved in the water. They can print by our machine. And uh, maybe I should say, fortunately, I finally find the one. It's good for me. So that's the only one identified, finally. So once I find, find the good one for the uh, printing, I do a two tests. So first test is do the short-term exposure to the initiator. The second is called long-term. So why, you, why we uh, have to do the short-term and long-term? So when we do a 3D printing, uh, the cell will stay with the monomer solution for maybe a couple hours before the print. So how the cell be affect in these one, two hours? So we have we then culture the cell with the um, initiator with different concentration and different time. So from one hour, two hours, until to five hours. So even based on the number, we can test the toxicity of the, the initiator. So this is the result. So they took my chart. So I, I will focus on here. So if you focus on the, the um, purple line, so this is the cell um, culture with the initiator for five hours. If the concentration of the lamp is higher than 0.15%, most cells will die. So lower means less cell, higher means more cells. So the conclusion here is, but for two hours, there's a green line here, it looks, it looks like until 1%, the cell is okay. No. So the conclusion here is, if you want the, the print, it should not be higher than 0.15% more than five hours. So ideally, you should finish a print in two hours. So that's what we call the short-term exposure um, toxicity test. And also, you do long-term. Long-term, that means once you finish printing, uh, actually the initiator still in, stay inside the, 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 the polymer. So how they affect the cell? So then we do a long-term exposure uh, test. We do three days, and um, here's the result. So if you do long-term, the concentration of a lab should not more than 0.15%. So that means you either reduce the initial concentration to this number, or you have to dilute the right way once you fabricate the scaffold. So these, these two tests should be very important when you design a, um, a new experiment or develop a new initiator for 3D printing. So very important. So how, how are you ensuring the cells are alive um, in PBS for three days without any growth media or anything? Yeah, actually we culture the cell in the growth media with serum. And then they put an additional initiator in it. Um, okay, so you can think about the zero, they are that good, right? But you have more and more initiator, they actually have some toxic to the cells. So it is not in actually PBS, it's in the growth media. You can be there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, as I discussed before, the concentration of the initial matter. Uh, so I use a different concentration from 0.2 until to 0.5. So point two looks okay, you can produce some pore here, and the, the, the distance between here is one millimeter, is the one we want. But if you are very high, put, put, put it five, the pore is kind of disappear, and uh, the, the here, and uh, the distance is closer, and uh, let's produce another extra junk that you don't want. So you have to control the, the, the concentration very, very carefully. You have to um, adjust at the beginning when you start the printing process. And also the dye. So why we need a dye? Um, I use a cartoon to show it. So for example, you try to print something like a lid. So this is a 3D view, and this is a top view. So let's do it like a lid. And then once you print the first layer, you want to print the second layer, right? So second layer on top of the first view, and then this is the top view. It should have some connection between the 
two groups. But when you do the second uh, layer printing, the light, they won't stop in the second layer. They all the way through the first layer. So let's, let's learn this out. So you get additional structure in the first layer, which is, which is not belong to the first layer. That's because the light cannot stop in the second layer. They all the way penetrate through the, the, the solution. So to, to prevent this happen, so you need something to, to, um, to block the light. They only allow light to penetrate to the, first, to, to the first layer, but not to the second layer. They only focus on the, on the one layer. Um, so, so um, the dye also should be water soluble, low toxicity, and then they should be absorbed by the visible light. Otherwise, they cannot work to, to block the light. Right? And the, the thing I use now is called phenolite, or they called also have a vitamin B2, people forever. So this one is very, very promising. It's a yellowish um, um, compound. They can block the light very well. Also, because it's vitamin, right? So you, you don't mind you get some additional vitamin in the, in the, in the scaffold. Mm. So I'm testing more and more with this one. Okay, so I have to try all condition and, and adjust the parameter. And then finally, I published a paper about two years ago in the biomaterials. And so we are the first to report the, uh, to, to use that technology for life cell application. This is the first report. So the result, you can get it from the hydrogen and different shape, and you can print it all the detail, all the words and the things, and uh, you can test the cell viability. And, uh, so for, to test the cell viability, I want to um, um, emphasize is, when you do the cell vi viability, you should do the one day, three day, and seven day, until 14 days. You cannot only do one day, because cell will die eventually if they are not happy. So you have to do from day one to day 14. And then they not only test the, the cell, meta, cell viability, and they also need to test the metabolic activity. I mean, and also, we do lab test staining, and then you should see from the top to the bottom. You should not only focus on one layer. You want to make sure the cell in the whole scaffold is alive. So probably you need to do the um, convocal and other methods to see all the cells in different layers. It's very important to control the quality of your print. So this result here shows that the polar scaffold heat can help the cell growth. As we see here. And then the most thing I, I thought about now is called the one um, one tissue printing. So it's perfect for like a simple tissue for the bone for cartilage. But how about for the, for the more complicated tissue like a heart? You need heart cells, you need a blood vessel. So how can we do the printing? So then for this, for this, the application. Uh, the projection studies local technology is not applicable because they only can produce one uniform um, materials. So by this way, we have to use another method. We have to use different nozzles, basically like a tip, to produce different tissues. So use the one to print the, the vessel, use another one to print the, 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 the cell you really want. So obviously now you have more complicated software to, to control the movement of the, 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 the nozzle and also up and down. Okay, so this is the, uh, the strategy we're going to use. Um, so you have two nozzles I'm talking about here. So you have one is going to print, print the, uh, the, the blood vessel. The second one is going to print the, 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 uh, the cell you want, like heart, you want to print the heart cell. And then the one is going to print the vessel. So this is the most strategy people used. And then to design the, the, the vessel, um, this, this is the, the blood vessel in, in a human body. You cannot design it so complicated, right? So you can simplify the, 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 the structure by uh, doing this design. So people figure out that an, an ankle like this is perfect for the, for the print and pretty good for the perfusion in the following application. So we just started this processing and uh, finished designing here. And this is the machine I'm using now. So I bought the machine from the, the BioBots. Actually, this is a um, company really new, and we are still working together with them to redesign the, 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 the machine. So here, uh, it's also based on photo cross linking. You can see the light is here. They produce light here, and uh, here's a nozzle. So you need one nozzle, so you can put the polymer with the cell in it, and then it's a tip to deposit the, the polymer. And this is the whole machine. 
And if you look at here, there are two motors. They can even move from this way, and that can move the other way. So this can precisely control the movement of the nuts of the deposit of things. Uh, I'm trying to record a uh, video to show the print processing, but I don't have a chance to, to really do it. So I just get one from YouTube, and then you can get an idea of how the printing will be done. Oops. So Rooster is a company to sell the stem cells. They try to combine with the print. So these are the nozzle, so they move uh, on the on the uh, print plate. So this is the, 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 the polymer print, and uh, we also work in a more complicated structure. Mm -hmm. So here's a tip to, to deposit the polymer, and there is a light to cure the the solution once you squeeze it out, they cure right away. Huh? Okay, so learn this is the most I will talk about today, and uh, thank you for coming and the uh, questions. Yeah, so how much is this machine then? Actually, it's very cheap, $5,000. 5000 Yeah. Oh. So, it's very, very cheap. But the problem is now they, can, they only have one nozzle. So if you, you, you install another nozzle, make it they're really hot. So we're trying to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're working directly with the company yeah. and they're engineering the... Yeah, so the they also need some opinion from us because they, they are engineers, they, they don't right. know too much biology. So they're close working with them uh, to be design the machine and also the software to make it more like a bad printing compatible. So okay. That's good. So have you... Um, any work with this continuous liquid interface production clip uh, technology? So can you say that again? The, the stuff they call clip technology. The leak, the clip. Continuous liquid. What was the other? What does it stand for? Continuous liquid interface. Interface. So the, the question is, do we want to try it? And, so, um, here. <laughs> so, okay, so after these are created, I mean, how, how are they, when will they be used in people? <laughs> when, when, are the, when are the actual clinical? So actually, for the, for the bone and then for the cartilage, I would think it should be in market about 10 years. Oh, but for the more company like heart and the liver, it should be much longer. Long. Yeah. So you want to see it soon. So. Yeah. yeah. So you get too much details. So we have relied on the progress in biology, not only in the engineering. Yeah. So for example, we print some vessel with some heart cells. We still need to really figure out how they communicate to each other, how they make a real heart. Yeah. So listen, we have to rely on the progress in the biology, so not only engineering side. So. Why do you focus on heart uh, instead of focusing on blood vessels? Because it's more complicated. Heart is more complicated compared to blood vessels. However, if you will find the solution making new blood vessels, you can help for surgery, for transplantation, or even for bypass surgery. A lot, a lot of contribution. Yeah, it's just not that complicated. Yeah. So, like, um, the another thing is. How is one example, right? Also, you can check then here's another example. So, because then for a simple things like skin, cartilage, and the bone, I always think it's too much, too much clinical challenge. So it should be very soon, but hard, like yourself. So it's kind of hard. Hmm? Interesting. And uh, what kind of MRI uh, machine do you use? For example, it has uh, uh, certain layers, right? So before modeling 3D design, 
you have to scan, for example, uh, yeah. uh, chess. So what kind of write uh, do you recommend to you? So currently, I use a lot of the micro CT. So personally, I did not really use MRI yet. Huh? Oh, so I, I use micro CT. Yeah, micro CT is is a way. You have to use a way to to export a way to get up the images. So uh, mostly, most of the file can be used for the, for the conversion. Huh? So once you have some uh, micro CT images, you can directly use the conversion software to make a 3D models. Huh? So the machine, you can use a clinical grid, or then we can use some like a use for animal facility. Um, you can scan the, the mice, or like the rabbit, so that's also used. You know? So, the yeah. application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was uh, thinking about using MRI with different, different contrast. For example, if you yeah. want to do blood vessels, right? So it, uh, it would be uh, more. It would be easier to you know design. Uh, yeah, yeah. 3D yeah. Uh, blood vessel, for example. So you mean you can because it, it, it has many functions mm -hmm. compared to CT scan. So that means you can visualize the, the blood vessel only. Right. Right? It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, what should be a la uh, width of layer in a CT uh, scan? So now we can uh, CT scanning. Yeah, CT scanning. CT scanning, you can down to like a 10 micrometer. Um, Micro. Yeah, we really, really think. But for our machine, we can down to 70 micrometer, like the, the 10 and 17, right? Yeah. So the, oh. because if you if you think about it, if you you have 10 microliter compared to 100 microliter scanning, right? So obviously you if you use the 10 micrometer as the thickness, you need a lot of scanning because you right. scan a lot. If you use 100 micrometer, so you you use less scanning, but you have lost some details. So it totally depends on the application. Right? But our machine is only good for 17. No? You're saying 17, not 70. Yes, 70. Yeah, 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. Yes. Okay. Oh. Micro, micrometer. Yeah. Yeah. If you think about the, the size of the cell, is about to 20 to 50 micrometer. Yeah. So yeah. if you're less than that, it's, it's kind of not use, useful for the mm -hmm. biological purpose. So. Does it depend on the needle in the 3D printing? Because in regular 3D printing, if you want to do a really good quality stuff, you have to have a really tight yeah. needle. So let's show here one thing. I'm going to put it here. Uh, here. Um, so one thing, it depends on the needle side, right? And that's it depends on the mass that you push the, push the, the polymer. Oh. Yeah, so if you, obviously if you use the hand, you cannot control really good, right? If you use the air pressure, they can, even if you have bigger needle, you still can produce smaller stream. So based on the pressure. Now, so you, you, well, that's why uh, the, the machine uses air pressure to push the things. You can, it, it can adjust the, the size of the, 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 the beam from the same needle. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the good one in technology. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. If you control different size of needle, it's one way to control the, the, the resolution. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about different kind of cell, tissue specific and stem cells, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer to work with? Yeah, so that's a good question. Like, obviously, like for uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, the the use the application of the technology rely on the, the program in cell biology. You know? So for the heart cells, it's really hard to, to expand the in, in, in vitro. You know? So you need to find a way to get enough cells to 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 get a print. You think about this big this size of heart, you need. A, tons of cells for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how can you get the landmark cells? So you have to use a stem cell because cells are grow faster and easy to get. You cannot wait to use a tiny piece of the heart cell to go the whole, whole heart. So the stem cell have to be used. But then you figure, figure a way to how to derive the stem cell, differentiate it into the, the heart cell. So mm -hmm. we have really, really figured out how to do it. Mm. So probably you can, you can successful in, in, in some part, for example, you have 100 cells. You probably get a Half of them become heart cells, but how about the other fifty percent? You cannot put them together to the printing because they are not heart cells. They can cause trouble. Hmm? So how to purify the cell? Pur purify the, the, the cell you want is another challenge. So you have to control the cell behavior. You do isolation. So they don't really rely on the, the cell biology. Yeah. 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 So that's do you have any uh, preclinical study? 
So we're trying, but we, we, we're trying a lot in animal model. So currently we're used to, to cure the um, cartilage defect in the, in the, in the sheep, uh, in, goat, in goat, yeah. So basically we make a uh, osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis model. So then basically you lose some of the cartilage, also your bone has some trouble. So then we scan the, 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 the knee with the troubles. And then we try to put something in that thing to, to, recure, to cure it. Yeah. It's ongoing in goat. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you using goat because it's a, a larger animal than, say, yeah. a mouse or a rat? Yeah, or yeah. It's just, okay. Because then, if you use a rabbit, the, 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 the cartilage is about 100 micrometer. It's really, really thin. Yeah. But human, we have two or three millimeter. It's about 100, probably 10 times thicker than the rabbit. Mm -hmm. but, but for the goat, they have really close to the side of the cartilage. That's why we use a large animal. Um, so when you're putting your set of suspension in the cross-linking solution, uh, so normally cells are sensitive to, say, temperature and uh, the oxygen, carbon dioxide balance and all that. So how would you think of stressing, I mean, minimizing the stress on the cells at the time mm -hmm. of cross-linking or curing? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So for the machine, I, I worked for the, the last machine I worked, they don't have anything to control temperature. Um, so they still have to sit in, in the room temperature. But in two hours, based on my uh, result, they still be fine. Uh, they won't die. Uh, they, they did not die during two hours in room temperature. But he, here, if we don't do some more complicated printing, maybe we have to control uh, the temperature here. So actually, they, this is a, uh, like, like, like a house here. So they already think about to build like a, a temperature control yeah. panel and all the CO2 control panel in, in it. Yeah. So they, they, this is a this is a very small house you can Yeah, it looks like an incubator. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then actually you look at here, there's a lot of space here. So you yeah. can do a lot of yeah. things, yeah. So so with the this the demo machine we got, we can do anything to it. So this would good one. So, so uh, actually my lab is um, in PSP2. So if you are interested, you can visit, and I can show you more details of the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so that much. Interesting. Yeah, so much. Yeah.